Ladies and gentlemen, we're now ready for the Gundog Group at Crufts 2017. Firstly, it is my pleasure to introduce today's Gundog Group judge. She grew up with Golden Retrievers, her parents having owned the renowned Bracken Gold Golden Retriever Kennels. Nowadays, with her So now you join us for our single group tonight. So numerous, is it? The she Gundog Group, of course. And, is and we're about to, to be introduced to our judge, Fiona Howard Scholes. She's judged the group seven times since doing her first group in 2001. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Fiona Howard Scholes, being escorted into the ring by Gerald King, the chairman of Crush. Fiona, a second generation Gundog judge, her parents had the Bracken Gold Golden Retriever Kennel. She followed on their footsteps, also took up American Cockers and also has been successful with Laza Apsos. Very elegant lady and uh, strong-minded, knows However, what she likes. Before we see the and the first the thing we're going to see here ring, is a lap of honour from the Gundog winner of the imported register the classes. These are classes for dogs that are getting established in this country still, so they don't have their own Ladies breed classes here, yet, but they are allowed to compete together at Crufts and a lap of honour is given to the winner. In this case, a uh, Corthal Griffin. This is Igor van der Velevela. Uh, gets the name Corthal Griffin after the man who developed the breed, Edward Corthal, the Dutchman, uh, used them. Um, uh, he had a German wirehead pointing dog and introduced some French blood to get this rugged, rough-coated dog. Very stylish, rugged and rustic. So he's the first of our Gundog Best of Breed winners, the magnificent Bracco Italiano. Followed by the Brittany. And he is the brisk ride of the Brittany. The English setter. Grace and beauty personified, the English setter. The German long haired pointer. One of the rarer breeds, the German long haired pointer. The German short haired pointer. And here we have the German short haired pointer. All and the purpose German worker. Pointer. A little stronger, the German wire haired pointer now, striding its way in. Now it's the turn of the Gordon setter. The first of the setters, this the heaviest, the largest, the Gordon setter. The Hungarian Vizsla. Here the Hungarian Vizsla. The Hungarian wire haired Vizsla. And, and the, the Hungarian Wirehead Vizsla. I think that was father and son handling, the too. The Irish Red and White Setter. The Irish Red and White Setter coming in next. The Irish Setter. Big round of applause for the Irish Setter. The Italian Spinoni. The distinctive pounding trot of the Italian Spinoni. The Legato Romagnolo. The Legato Romagnolo. Another Italian breed. The large Munsterlander. And he's a German breed, the large Munsterlander. The Pointer. Another graceful one, this is the Pointer. That's one of big and now the already. first of the Retrievers, the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Very nice, the heaviest of the Retrievers, the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Followed by the Curly Coated Retriever. The curly coated retriever. The flat coated retriever. And big cheers for the flat coat. And very stylish it is. The golden retriever. One of the largest entries here at Crufts, the golden retriever. The Labrador retriever. And the biggest of the gundog entries and the biggest entry in the show, the best of breed winning Labrador. The Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. Delightful little Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. And the first of our spaniels, the American Cocker Spaniel. And here's the stylish tricolour American Cocker. The Clumber Spaniel. And this, the Clumber Spaniel. The Cocker Spaniel. The Blue Roan Cocker Spaniel. From a big entry for two judges. 
the English Springer Spaniel. And the English Springer Spaniel. The Field Spaniel. One of the ancient land spaniels, the Field Spaniel, coming in now. The Irish Water Spaniel. And the Irish Water Spaniel. Clowning and raring to go. Typical breed temperament. The Sussex Spaniel. The, the Sussex Spaniel. Golden liver coat. The Welsh Springer Spaniel. And there's the, the Welsh Springer. The Spanish Water Dog. The little Spanish Water Dog. And finally, the Bimarana. And there's the silver ghost dog, the Vimrana. all the dogs in the Dundalk group, so I'll now hand over to my colleagues Jonathan Daltrey and Graham Hill for further commentary. Thanks very much, T. It is me and all So the Fiona Coward Scholes now going to take a look at her gun dog best of breed winners. Her first opportunity, of course, to see them, unless she's had to referee between two judges who were judging dogs and bitches. Walking down the line, taking in the outlines and her first impressions of these beautiful best of breed winners. Of course, it's uh, when you're doing this, you, the judge will also relax. Once you know, it's always nerve wracking waiting to get started. Once she's got the dogs in front of her, she'll relax, taking in their general outlines. She'll feel comfortable when she's seen them all and then gets her hands on. That flat coat looks lovely from here. She's got some beautiful gun dogs in this group. American Cocker, on down the Spaniels, the Clumber. The Irish Water Spaniel still clowning around. Part of the history, heritage and makeup. The distinctive sculpted head of the Bracco Italiano, long foreface, huge nose for scenting, a soft expression from those dark ochre eyes. Powerful hunting dog of noble appearance, a hunter pointer retriever, of course, can do just about everything out in the field. Dignified and intelligent, an excellent scenting ability. The stylish gait of the um, Bracco Italiano has, has gathered many fans. This one, a world champion. It's won all over the world and won at the world championship on more than one occasion. It's come all the way from Italy to win, and uh, he's had a great show. And now something quite different. Different, it's the um, Brittany. This is a French breed. They hunt, point and retrieve, so they're versatile gun dogs, cobby and compact, and with a brisk stride. Now, the Brittany used to be known as the Brittany Spaniel, but since it is more versatile than just retrieving and flushing, they've dropped it. It's now just known as the Brittany. It's big ribbed, compact, and red and white, although it comes also in tricolour and black and white. Very square outline, the Brittany, and that characteristic skull shape. Developed in the mid 1800s, this is such an elegant English setter. Medium sized, very athletic, they're intensely friendly and good natured dogs. Soft, expressive exp expression, head carried high, long and lean with a deep square muzzle, plenty of scenting ability.
This is a tricolour, isn't it, Frank? Yes, it's the blue Belton with the, the tan markings as well, a tricolour. Very stylish. The lashing tail action is a hallmark of all of the set of breeds. Beautiful elegance in the head. Clean That's striding. And star the English setter. Now, here is one of the more rare gun dog breeds. This is the German long haired pointer. And they're relatively rare. They were bred from a combination of pointing breeds in Germany and they share the same background as the Munsterlander so they're all purpose and they come in liver, liver and white and the colour of trout so uh, but they're a noble breed, they have nobility about the head and great scope on the move. This one just playing up a little in the big ring. Handler very sensibly going back to the beginning of the opportunity to move. You want to make the most of your, most of your time in the big ring. This is the largest of the three German pointers. They have to be strongly built, scopy on their movement, so they can cover the ground economically. You can certainly see strong bone there in those legs. Determined hunter and game finder with a really keen nose, the German long haired pointer. This is Ruben. In Lean, powerful, with great speed and endurance, the German short head pointer, naturally keen worker, should be good and steady, soft, intelligent expression. They're deep chested, muscular shoulders, and a good firm top line, not too long. Absolutely, uh, absolutely purposeful in their build, standard confirmation. They can do everything. The wonderful utilitarian gun dog, strongly boned but not overdone in any, with a hard textured coat to give it uh, weatherproof qualities. This one just looking a little uneasy in the ring. It's settling a little now. Smooth and lithe on the move, covering a lot of ground in an extended trot. Now here we have the German wirehead pointer. This one, a big winner. It's uh, Esme Dragon from Rona's home at Bereve. It's an import from Holland and comes from a very successful kennel. This is heavier than the German shorthead pointer. And of course, the differentiating feature is this crisp wire coat, which gives it But moustache and eyebrows come from its furnishings. Deep chested, slightly falling top line, shouldn't there be, Frank, from the shoulders to the to the croup, the rear end of the dog. And the tail carried very nicely here, just off the back. The heaviest of the setters, black and tan coat. This is the Gordon setter. They should have the appearance of a weight-carrying hunter, a stylish dog nonetheless, built on galloping lines. Deep rather than broad, a long muzzle, large scenting nose, of course, a powerful dog all through. Now, this breed takes its name from the Duke of Gordon, on whose estate the breed was developed. They were originally uh, black, white and tan, or black and white, because they were easily distinguished in working on the moors. But then, with selective line breeding, they now come only in this rich black and tan colour. And they should always be feathered, of course, as setters, but you never want the feathering to be too heavy that the dog's work would be impeded. They have to be able to cover the ground on the move. Now the Hungarian Vizsla, the, this is the short-haired variety. This is a breed which again is hunt point retrieve. It can scent the game, point for the game and retrieve the game. This is moderate in its build. It comes only in this russet gold color. Its skin is slightly greasy to the touch.
And this one has come from Hungary to Pete, compete at Crust, just two and a half years old. But already a champion in Romania, Serbia, Czechoslovakia. So. Hails from the central plains of Hungary originally, possibly even further east than that. Prominent chest and breastbone, powerful dog through all through. Now here's the wirehead counterpart. This is a Hungarian wirehead Vizsla. Stronger in bone, more robust than the shorter coated cousin, and bred originally for hunting both fur and feather. You want good, good proportions, slightly longer than tall, a nice long rib cage in that body, and the level top line, dead level on the move. And this one has become a champion today, so and still a junior. He, he looks a young dog yet, but a very nice one. Again, that crisp coat. They're slightly heavier in build. This one not yet at full maturity, but a lovely example of the breed in its proportions and style. And we can see the crispness of that coat and uh, devoted to its owner, looking up in a lovely, kind eye and expression. And now the Irish red and white setter. This was the original Irish setter and it uh, was the foundation for the red setter, which we'll see later. Very popular um, because it was easily seen working on the moors. Sturdily built, athletic. And appropriate, this one's an Irish show champion and come from Galway in Ireland to compete at Crufts. Five years old. And this is a breed which was nearly extinct at, uh, after the Second World War, and only a few breeders got together to revive the gene pool. Of course, the popularity of the Red Setter. Such a popular gun dog, this. Racy, balanced in outline, such a handsome breed, refined and affectionate, with that long, lean head. This is the Irish setter. Always a lovely, intelligent expression. A muscular dog, able to do a decent day's work. Deep chested, firm top line. Their lovely nature is what endears them to people's sofas as well as being out in, the, in their field of work. The key word for looking at an Irish setter is racy. They have to have clean lines and elegance and the neck flowing down from the withers to the tail should flow along. And You'd... always that wonderful rich chestnut colour. Now, the Italian Spinoni, a very distinctive breed with its own top line, unique in its sloping top line with a sturdy body, thick leathery skin and harsh top coat. A pounding trot, a lot of substance there. Overall, a square dog should be heavy boned and they're described as having a soft almost human expression the top line is unique there's a slight dip behind the withers and a rise to the croup so don't think it's got a dippy back it's correct for the breed and look at that pounding trot a lot of substance there The Legotto Romagnolo, originally developed in the marshes of northern Italy as a waterfowler, a dog that would work with the gun, bringing back ducks when they were shot over water. But as the marshes gradually dried up, 
these dogs diversified and were used as truffle hunters. That coat should be woolly and weatherproof. This one appropriately called Brownie. <laughs> and uh, this harsh, this hard woolly coat which gives it protection when working in the water. They've come from the Netherlands to compete at Crufts today. And now the clean outline of the large Munsterlander. This again is a German breed, an all-purpose dog. Shares some of its similar uh, bloodlines with the German long-haired pointer, but this only comes in blue roan and black and white. And often we'll see a, the, a black head with just a little bit of white on it. They are breed features. Very stylish. This one is a big winner. It's been best of breed at Crufts before and comes from a famous kennel, a Raycross kennel. Very nice, very nice outline. Clean striding. Very important that they cover the ground well. <laughs> Look at that tail. Fantastic wagging tail all the way around. The outline of the pointer should be a series of graceful curves, aristocratic and yet with an appearance of strength and ability to, to clip some speed. Distinctive dished face, of course, soft lipped, wide nostrils, long ribs and a good strong back. This one is the breed record holder. She's the top winner in the history of the breed, a best in show winner, and has won a lot of gun dog groups. I saw her just pipped to the post last year, but this year she's triumphed over all the other pointers to represent her breed here in the group. And now the distinctive coat of the Chesapeake Bay Retriever, the heaviest of the ret retrievers, strong bone, big barrel ribs, and this wonderful harsh coat with that, which is greasy to the touch because they used to have to retrieve ducks from the icy waters of uh, Chesapeake Bay and in North America. I love the description of the colours in this breed, dead grass, sedge, brown or ash. And of course they're camouflage colours, so they could be ca camouflaged in the landscape in which they were working. A beautiful head and expression. You can see the strength of bone and the powerful chest in this dog. Another with a very distinctive coat. This is the curly-coated retriever. Elegant and steady, a really reliable gun dog with a remarkable ability for marking game. That means watching where it falls and remembering where to go and fetch it. That wedge-shaped head only with a slight stop to the, fro to the foreface. A thick mass of tight curls. This is the tallest of the retriever breeds. This one is a black, they also come in liver, but the key feature of the breed is the astrakhan curls, which are again a form of protection for when working. There, the wedge-shaped head, beautiful moulding in the head, strongly boned. Deep chested, plenty of fore chest, slightly longer than tall, a really strong retriever. Now a, a very good looking dog here, the flat coated retriever. And this is the raciest of the retrievers. That means it's got a, a little bit more length than the other retrievers. Clean neck and shoulders, this lovely moulding to the head. It's racy and we'll see it's distinctive for this clean outline and this ever wagging tail. And six year old Lucas has come all the way from Tromso in Norway to compete at Crafts. 
Flat-coated retrievers always popular here, so he's done a fantastic job to get into the group this evening. And this one has really taken my eye. He's very handsome, carrying himself beautifully, and a lovely quality head. Taking its present name way back in 1920, and developed by the first Lord Tweedmouth, this is the Golden Retriever. Another one, heavy in body, balanced, powerful, and a natural worker. Level top line, strong and muscular. They're such versatile dogs, Goldens. We see them in so many different disciplines at Crufts here, don't we? Everything from the gamekeeper's classes to the show ring. And, and yes, and over 500 of them here today. Two judges sorted them out, and this bitch has uh, been best of breed. Spend a day judging Golden Retrievers, you know, and you realize why the owners are so devoted to them. Fantastic temperaments. That's why they're so popular as household companions. Now, from the largest entry in the show, we have the Labrador Retriever. I've seen a lot of these today. There were 550 of them here, and I judge the bitches. This, however, is the dog, the co-judge, and myself agreed that he had the, the edge for coming into the group. A beautiful dog, strong, compact, double-coated, fit for purpose. What is it like trying to get your way through, judge your way through 300 Labrador Retriever bitches? You must have been judging for eight or ten hours flat. Well, yes, it's the adrenaline that keeps you going, the pleasure of looking at lovely animals. This one, thick otter tail, double coated for protection when working. They were developed in North America, but it's thought that their root stock came from Devon, where the retrievers were taken with um, fishermen and uh, traders and developed there in the Cape of Labrador. Little skip there from the Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever, developed in Canada, this breed, to lure waterfowl towards the shore within gunshot range. Wedge-shaped head, broad, slightly rounded in the skull with a tapering muzzle, deep-chested, short-backed, and that ever-wagging tail. This is Patty. They've come from Milano in Italy to be judged here today. Just 17 months old, this bitch. And uh, I said uh, the toller means it's a, a decoy dog. They were sent out to, to work on the shores of the lake retrieving sticks and it was their action and their incessant tail action which was supposed to lure the ducks within the gunman's range and then and now the american cocker on the table now our judges bred these so she knows a lot about them she'll look be giving it a specialist look the american cocker was developed from the same bloodline as the cocker spaniel but uh, when they were exported these rootstock exported to america they were bred on different lines more sloping and top line and more profuse in the coat That rounded skull is important in this breed, yes. isn't it? Short muzzled, round, full forward facing eyes. Yes, a, a different head type, rather shorter in the foreface, more rounded in the skull. And above all, the top line has to be held on the move, sloping from the withers to the tail set. But underneath that glamorous coat, there has to be chest, substance and rib. They were bred as retrievers of small birds. This is Elridge, a clumber spaniel, handled by his owner Ralph Dunn in the ring, and of course they won best in show here at Crufts with a clumber many years ago. I can't actually remember exactly which date it was. Strong, balanced, and well-boned, the clumber, large and square. Beautiful, vine-leaf-shaped ears there.
and that coat is abundant, close and silky straight. Plenty of feathering, but again, not too much to stop the dog from doing its job. And they take the name from the Clumber Park, the estate of the Duke of Newcastle, who is reputed to have developed the breed there. The heaviest of the land spaniels, coming in this lemon and white and or orange and white. This one a really nice mover this evening. Strong in the skull and uh, very active with all that substance. Now here is the Cocker Spaniel sent forward from an entry of over 400 for two judges. This is the Blue Roan Cocker Spaniel and he was in actual fact top gun dog in the country last year. He's a fine example of the breed being short backed. There he comes. Short backed. Cockery which means he's got big ribs, short body and a little rounded croup and an ever wagging tail. And the cockers were originally bred to hunt woodcock, hence their size. Separated from the Springer and the Field Spaniel around about in the 1870s. Delightful temperament makes them such a popular pet. All of the land spaniels come from the same root blood. It was only they were differentiated when they were born by size or colour or what they were going to work on. Highest on the leg and the rangiest, really, of the British land spaniels, but nonetheless compact, strong and active. This is the English Springer Spaniel, well-balanced, deep-chested, that coat close, straight and weatherproof with moderate feathering. You don't want anything too extreme. They're called Springer Spaniels because before gunpowder gun was invented, they used to work with the hunters by driving the birds into nets. So they used to spring forward and flush the birds out into the, the nets. Highest on the leg of the land spaniels. And here is the field spaniel, the very ancient breed, and it's a breed which was nearly extinct after the Second World War. They are elegant, dignified, a little longer and taller than the cockers. That long, lean muzzle gives them the most noble appearance, doesn't it, Frank? They're delightful gun dogs. No, no, noble is the word to describe them. These beautiful raised eyebrows, almond-shaped eyes, flat bone, a feature of the breed. This is Luther, the Irish Water Spaniel, owned by Judith Carruthers, judged today by another Irish Water Spaniel expert, Martin Ford. Largest of the Spaniel family, a true wild fowler, characteristic coax, comes from poodle origins originally, although the face is smooth, just look at the curls and the rich color on this dog. Now, although they are described as a Spaniel, when they go to work, they work in retriever trials. They do the work of a retriever. Underneath that mass of curls is a big barrel chest. Down the, the legs, strongly boned, and webbed feet, which it says helps them to work in water. And those... Chris Brown was in charge of the Sussex Spaniels today. We had 59 Sussex entered. Grace Jones is male, number 15571, is her best free room. By 1945, there were only 10 Sussex registered with the kennel club. And now the distinctive golden coat of the Sussex Spaniel, the lowest to ground of the Spaniels, and lots of substance. Rich liver, a strong skull, and a lot of substance. The Sussex Spaniel is truly an old breed of great substance. 
And apparently Sussex Spaniels are really noisy hunters. They, they move with that distinctive role, don't they, with the yes. length of the back yes. and the substance you're, of the dog. You're quite right. They're supposed to give tongue when they're working. This one, three times best of breed at Crofts. That's a remarkable record. A very nice dog. Deep chested and holding that level top line beautifully on the move. A little lighter all through than the Springer Spaniel and lower on the legs. Symmetrical and compact is the Welsh Springer with that beautiful coloured coat so characteristic of the breed. Strong and merry, slightly domed skull you can see there, that coat silky and dense. They have such a beautiful expression, Welshies, uh, don't they? And, of course, whilst the English Springer comes in a variety of colours, liver and white, black and white, tricolour, the Welsh Springer only comes in this rich chestnut and white. Beautiful moulding to its head. The leaves shaped like vine leaves. The ears shaped like vine leaves there. Now the Spanish water dog, this one a big winner, distinctive for its coat, this woolly, dense coat which gives it protection when working. In their native Spain, they're also used not only as water dogs, but for herding sheep. And that coat can be trimmed only perhaps every six months. No artificial trimming for the show. There's no shaping, it's all natural. Deep chested, the little Spanish water dog, level backed, slightly longer than tall. The strong skull and foreface. <laughs> Great character there. And they can come in black, brown, white, or party colored like this one. So here's the last of our competitors in the gun dog group, the Silver Ghost, the Weimarana. Takes his name from the German court of Weimar. Round, amber or blue-gray eyes, very aristocratic in appearance, deep-chested, level-backed, short, smooth, sleek coat. And this, this silver colour is, is the correct colour for the breed. They don't want to be dark blue or grey. That's not permitted. We want this nice lightness. There's a gaunt nobility about the head of the Vimrana. So here's our judge. Taking one last look at these gun dog best of breeds, what we want to know is who is she going to choose for tonight's group winner? I think it's a, been a good group. She's got a lot of good dogs to choose from. The flat coat really took the eye, but there are some other strong contenders there.
I'm enjoying watching this judging. She's taking them all in, calculating. Very thoughtful, trying yes. to which of the eight she's going to have. This is a crucial time. She must uh, compose her thoughts. So now I think the first that's going to be pulled in is... The German wirehead pointer and the Gordon setter. Now, the pointer comes forward. Well, that's not a surprise, really. Such a and quality And the flat bit. coat. The flat coat looking marvellous. The American Cocker Spaniel and the, co the Cocker Spaniel. Striding down the line, she's... Um, I think, is that her shortlist? It was a and big the, cheer. The Weimaraner, the Weimaraner comes in. So he's a big winner, a breed record holder for the for Weimaraners. So, so now the other best of breed winners will leave the ring and our finalists. So she has um, seven, seven in this lineup. So there's the first of them, the German wirehead pointer. We've got the Gordon setter, the pointer. Big cheer went up for the flat-coated retriever. Now... Back to the front of the line, she's going to move them again. She'll be looking for accurate sound movement. This is Sharon Pinkerton, the show champion Esme Dragon from Rona's home at Bariv, a Dutch import. Such a clever breeder over so many years with this wonderful breed. And now the, the Gordon Setter. He's, he won the group here last year, so he's uh, used to this big ring atmosphere. Three times best of breed at Crufts. It's a remarkable achievement. James, owned by David Alcorn, David Crowther and uh, Jose uh, Baddeley. And here the... Excellent clean stride, the flowing curvaceous lines of this liver and white pointer. Juicy, owned by Sharon Dyer and Sam Dyer from Blackburn in Lancashire. As we said earlier, there were two judges for the... The flat-coated retriever coming from Tromso in Norway to compete. This is Lucas. Beautiful outline, held perfectly on the move. And this dog has not stopped performing since it stepped into the group ring, and that's so important at this level. And from the famous Afterglow Kennel, this tricolour American cocker, sloping top line, tail carried perfectly. Jason Lynn handling in the ring tonight. And his English counterpart now, the Cocker Spaniel. Quite different in the head. This is Vinny with Sarah Amos Jones, the little cocker spaniel, that ever wagging tail, the merry cocker. You then, can understand where it gets that name from. Then the gaunt elegance of the Weimaraner. Jackie Ward handling in the ring. This is Ice, the last of our finalists. Right, she's moving them into size order now, I think, so we're going to be able to see them move together. And this is where she'll be looking at top line and carriage and the one which is really asking to win. Yes, round she goes. Lovely for you to see, ladies and gentlemen, the Super Gun Power in the stride of the German wirehead pointer. Look at the pointer go. He's got a very good lineup here, so uh, this will be a tough competition. That glorious flat coat. American Cocker and the little Cocker Spaniel bringing up the rear. Super gun dogs tonight in this group, aren't they? Very good. Well, she's had her hands on the dog, she's felt what's under the coat, she's looked at their conformation. She's now looking which is closest to perfection for its breed. Here come the boards. 
So now we're going to find out our fifth group winner for Crofts 2017. The winner of the Gundog Group, Crofts 2017. It's the American Cocker Spaniel. Now Fiona's bred them. She obviously liked what she saw on the table and the hands-on examination. So it's the American Cocker goes forward to Best in Show competition tomorrow evening. That glorious flat coat taking second place. No shame in that, it was such a strong group. For third spot, it's the German wirehead pointer. The import from Holland for the Bereave Kennel. A delighted breeder glued to the television, I'm sure. And it's the Gordon Setter taking fourth place in this group. So it's but there the we go, it's the American Cocker Spaniel show champion Afterglow Miami Inc. Miami, just two years old, sent forwards from the breed by Ken Sinclair, handled by Jason Lynn. taking the Gundog Group for 2017. A very nice win for this American Cocker. He's Thank you very much, Jonathan. Jason Lynn, that was an incredible performance to top. What a wonderful Gundog Group. Uh, thank you very much. It was um, a beautiful, beautiful group of dogs. Crufts is always uh, such a special show, so it was a really, really wonderful win. And it wasn't that long ago that we saw you here at Invest in Show at Crufts? Uh, no, uh, a couple years ago. With the standard poodle? Yes, with uh, Ricky, the black standard poodle. Well, many congratulations. That was a super Gundog group to top, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. So there we have it, our fifth group winner, Miami. Glorious American Cocker Spaniel with Jason Lynn. Flat coat in second, the German wirehead pointer and that beautiful Gordon Setter taking group four. Jason Lynn, the handler, is from America, settled now in England, uh, highly successful working in an American Cocker Kennel in the United States, so uh, he brings a lot of experience here. The dog going beautifully for him, he gets the best out of all his dogs.